Hello everybody and welcome, and today I would like to introduce you to a new and updated Magic Leap 2 development video series where I'm going to be covering all the different features available with the ML2 Unity SDK and Unreal. Also keep in mind that you'll be able to go along with me with or without having a physical device thanks to the power of the new ML2 App Simulator. Also I'm going to be giving Magic Leap a big thanks for sponsoring this video series. So today we're going to be focusing on a few important areas. We will go over installing all the new development tools. We're going to also be checking the ML2 OS software and applying updates as needed. Also enabling developer mode on your ML2 OS, Unity project setup, and lastly, we're going to be running and deploying an ML2 application to the device and also with the app simulator. If you're ready for this, let's go ahead and jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so the first thing, let's go into developer and we're going to also go into the portal. Once you're going to the portal, click on download ML2 tools and here you can download for Windows or Mac OS. I'm going to be clicking on Windows just to make sure that I download it. And then we'll just wait here for the hub to get downloaded and then just click on it. Once you click on it, we're gonna be able to install it and just click on next then agree on the actual agreement and then click on next. The default location is fine. And then this should allow us to install the Magic Leap Hub, which is where we're going to be installing most of the Magic Leap tools. Now in the Hub, click on Star OS Installer. This one I recommend you to be very cautious because it's going to be doing a factory reset. You can decide not to do it. And also make sure you connect it via USB-C to your PC or your Mac computer. And then based on, we can do secure or unsecure based on what I'm showing you right now in the box. Just click on download and install. It's gonna take some time. I just fast forward it to get it installed, but it should take some time to get it installed. You can also look at the log here to see what actually happened. Just click on exit. And this should wrap up basically getting the operating system updated on your device. I just wanted to make sure that we get it updated. Now let's go ahead and click on home and then we're going to be launching the package manager to install the Unity 3D creation bundle, which is going to allow us to install Unity examples, the Magic Leap application simulator, which we're going to be using a lot, MRTK, Soundfield audio, and then additional tools that we're also going to be using today. Just wait here until it finishes. Looks like we're good to go. And then just click on restart to restart the Magic Leap hub. Once it restarts, it's gonna open up and we're gonna go into the Unity Hub so that we can install the right version of Unity. I already have 2022 that too, but I want to install the latest LTS. So go into Archive and then download Archive. We're gonna go into all the 22 versions and I'm gonna install the 2022 that too. 21, just click on Unity Hub. And then it should basically show up as a pop-up here. Install Android build support, basically all components under it. And just click on Continue. And then we have another agreement in here for Unity. And this should take some time. It's gonna do it and fast forward it really quick so that we can save some time. And then just click on new project and make sure that we're creating a new project with 2022.21 because I have many versions. If you're the same, then just make sure that you select the right version. Then click on that 3D URP. And I don't have the template yet because I just installed this version. And then just give the project a name. And once you give it a name, you're also gonna need a location and then just create project and it should create here or brand new project that we're gonna be using for Magic Leap 2 development. So the next thing that we need to do though is we need to go ahead and download this asset from the Unity Asset Store, which is going to basically allow us to set up all the different project settings, build settings. This is something that is going to save you a lot of time. So you can also have the option to do this manually, but I recommend downloading that Magic Leap setup tool and then basically importing this into your project. Once you get it downloaded and installed, you're gonna see this pop up and this is going to basically help you configure the project. You can locate the SDK, fix different settings. And normally this is something that I wish we had with different applications and templates because it's going to allow you to save a lot of time. Then it's gonna tell you, okay, where is the actual SDK? Just go ahead and select it. I recommend using the registry from Magic Leap instead of having a local cache. That's just something that's gonna make it easier. And then just go ahead and hit restart to basically change the project to use a new input system. And also once you get it up and running, we can say, yep, go ahead and restart it again. There's gonna be a couple of restarts in here that we need to do. 
once you get the project set up, you're going to get the pop-up and everything should be clean. So we can go ahead and just close that. We are also going to need to start setting up different, different settings on the Unity rendering pipeline. So just go ahead and delete everything that we have in there under settings by default. And then we're going to be creating basically a new rendering asset, which is going to be used for URP to render or 3D assets in Magic Leap 2. And I'm going to give it a name that is simpler. So just go ahead and remove the word new. Okay, so the next thing we need to go to file, build settings, player settings, and we need to basically grab that file, the universal rendering pipeline asset, and associate it with our graphics. So let's go into graphics and then just click on the option here to select it. Just click on continue. The next thing that we're going to do is let's go into settings in our actual device and then about. And if you scroll all the way down, you're going to be able to see build number. Just tap it a couple of times until you have enabled developer mode. Then if you want to look at the options, uh, you can go, I believe you can go up or perhaps down to system. And then you're going to see that now we have the option advanced developer options. You're going to see that we have multiple options in here. Just make sure that USB debugging is turned on. So now the next thing is let's go ahead and remove the main camera because we're going to need to grab the actual XR rig, go into packages, magic leap SDK, runtime, then tools then go into prefab and you're going to see that we have an XR rig that we can drag and drop into our scene. As soon as you do that, you're going to have an XR rig which basically contains multiple components that we're going to need, including the game controller, the camera. So click on the camera. You're going to see that now we have a camera that it's getting rendered on the view. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do though is let's go ahead and collapse it and we're going to be creating a new cube. So go into 3D and then cube. I'm going to call it right cube. Just make sure that you type that out. Once you do that, I'm going to set it to be 0, 0, 0 on the position. And then the rotation on Y is going to be 65. And then X, Y, and Z for the scale is going to be 0.25. That way we can see a small cube right in front of the camera. You can see that we can see it right there on the game view. Then the next thing that I'm going to do though is I'm going to create a new material. So I'll go into materials and then which we're going to be creating a new folder. And right click on it, create, and then you're going to be able to basically select that material option here and just call it red because we're going to need it and reuse it for different accesses on the controller. I'll show you that in a minute. Just change the color of the material to be red and assign it to our red cube in here. Once you get it assigned, then we should be good to go into the game controller as well. So if you scroll down, you're going to see the model pairing is an option. Just associate it to the game controller. Now we're going to go down and grab our actual controller model. That way we can see an actual model on the controller when we move it around. Let's go ahead and drag it to assets just for now. And then I'm going to be creating a brand new folder where we're going to be putting all of our prefabs. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. So just click on folder and then prefabs. Once you do that, we can move our controller model to the prefabs folder. And then there's a couple of things in here. The colors on the axes are now correct. Okay, so it looks like all the accesses are now correct. And the reason why they weren't correct is because it was using a different pipeline instead of the URP. So we should be good to go now. Now, if you go back though, let's go ahead and make that uh, basically a component associated with the game controller. So a controller model is going to be associated with model prefab, which is going to be instantiated automatically when we run the scene. Now go into file, build settings, and then we should be able to deploy this to our device. I already have it connected to my computer via USB-C. So we can also hit build to be able to build it. I'm going to replace it with the previous build. And now we should be able to test it. All right, so now go into File, Build Settings, and then Player Settings, and make sure you go into XR Plugin Management, and then Standalone, and enable Magic Leap App Simulator, because we're going to be using the App Simulator to test with. So now we can close out of everything and go into the actual simulator here, Star Application Simulator in the Hub. And you're going to see now we have Device, Hybrid, and also Simulator. Let's use the simulator for now. You also have different options in here for SDK, so just click on Connect. 
Once you hit connect, you're gonna see that now we have this really cool view of the simulator. So basically it's simulating a desk. We can move around as well. I also have hands and I also have a controller and then I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to basically move in and out. Also on the scene view, you can also see that I can move around. I can also select different objects. And there's just a lot that we can do here. We can also, if we wanted to change some of the rendering options, you can see that I can go darker or lighter. So a lot of these tools are really beneficial because we don't have to deploy to device to test a lot of things. So some of these different options are gonna be helpful to save basically development time. So that's really handy. You can also look at the head pose in here as it updates as I move around in the device view. You can also look and see I go in and out and also those numbers are changing right away. Scene view camera is also going to be, you can also change it by just using basically the X value on this option and also the Y value. I can also look at hand tracking. There's different options in here for hand tracking. Eyes gaze, which is eye tracking and also marker tracking. And then there's also different permissions in here that you can also simulate if you didn't want to allow something. Let's say that you don't want to put that in your manifest when you deploy, you can simulate it in here and you can also simulate system events, which is really, really powerful. So let's see how we can test it. So he play in Unity. Once you hit play in Unity, you're gonna see that now we have full control here in the actual simulator. And just know that anything that we do here in the simulator during play mode is going to be all reflected in Unity. So here I'm changing values on the app simulator and it's getting reflected in Unity. I can also go the other way around, right? I can also move something in Unity and then it's going to be changed right on the other side. So in this case, I'm changing it right in the app simulator and everything is changing. So I can also tilt the controller and all of that is also changing in real time. But if I wanted to do that in Unity, you can also see that that is getting changed on the other direction. So you can also do the same thing with the device though. If you wanted to just test this scene without having to deploy and not using the app simulator, you're basically using the app simulator, but it's getting rendered right on the device. You're gonna get a pop-up on the device that you need to allow. Once you hit play, you're gonna see that now we can see this right on the device without actually having to deploy. So in this case, the app simulator is streaming that information to the device and that's how you know Unity to the app simulator and app simulator is streaming it to the device. So that's how the communication works. So this is really powerful because again, it's going to save you time. Well, I hope you had a lot of fun and learned a ton. I also recommend going over the ML2 development portal, which is going to be linked in the description. And also, if you have any additional questions regarding of what I just mentioned, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell because it's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos in the future. Thank you very much, guys.